Records video on Sunday, the 7th of January, 2024. Just gone 9.40 am Chicago time. Do hope you are doing well. And a happy new year to all the followers of eMini Watch. So we took a couple of weeks off uh, over Christmas and New Year's, and that's why you've not heard from me. But we also changed locations. So uh, having spent a glorious few months in France, we're now back in Hawaii on the beautiful island of Kauai. A time to get out of the uh, cold cold water in France and back to Hawaii where the surf is pumping and the water is glorious. So we're going to do a quick recap of the uh, charts in this video, but it's also the beginning of the year and I have to do a couple of uh, housekeeping updates at the beginning of every year. The first one is uh, this article, feature article on the eMini Watch website all about eMini futures. It has been updated for the contract rollover dates and the holiday trading dates. So if you go to uh, this link on the eMini Watch website and then uh, click on the contract rollover link here, this will have the updated information for the days that we have rollover uh, on the eMini contracts this year. And then if you scroll down a little bit further, we also have the trading holidays marked as well. And at the bottom of this uh, page, I think the most useful bit is there's a trading calendar with all those things marked. So we've got our seasonal trades marked. We also have our eMini trading holidays marked as well as the rollover dates. And they all come in this little Google calendar that you can add on to your personal or your work calendar. Also comes in a couple of other formats here that you can use uh, with other programs as well. So there we go. That's the first little housekeeping update. The second thing that I do on an annual basis is update this spreadsheet, which is the tick bar chart settings for each of the markets. If you're a subscriber to the Better Indicators, you've got access to this spreadsheet in the Your Account page. And what I need to do with this spreadsheet is update the count uh, on a daily basis. So uh, the way I do that is using this little indicator. We use a 440 minute chart on each of the futures markets. We put in a, a tick volume indicator here, and this calculates the average number of trades, ticks, uh, that go through uh, on a daily basis for the last 200 days for that market. So here's the Aussie dollar, 47,000 trades on a daily basis. We update the number here, and it calculates what the tick count is per hour. And then what I do is I adjust tick chart settings so that we get close to that. So if you start with a 250 setting for the tip bars, three times that is 750 and three times that is 2250. And that is close uh, to the 2000 ticks for the Aussie dollar. So it's just checking that number of trades per day hasn't changed dramatically between markets so that we need to adjust the uh, tip bar chart settings for each of those different markets. And last year there were no changes, but this year we actually did need to make a couple of changes. For the 10-year notes, we've moved from a 3,000 tip bar chart to a 3,900 tip bar chart. For the Japanese yen, we've moved from a 900 tip bar chart to a 1,200 tip bar chart. Those have both gone up because of the extra activity that's been going through on the 10-year notes and the Japanese yen this year. But we've got four markets that have gone down in activity. So we've got crude going down from a 3,300 tip bar chart to a 3,000. And then we've got the Aussie dollar copper and silver going from 900 tip bar chart down to a 750 tip bar chart setting. So there we go. There were none of these changes required last year, but this year I felt it was justified uh, moving those charts. So you'll see that in the tip bar charts from me in the next year, that those are the base charts that we'll be using uh, to review activity on a weekly basis. So there we go. A couple of housekeeping notes. The first one is the update to the trading holidays and rollover days uh, for the e-mini this year. And the second one is a couple of changes to the tip bar chart settings. So let's get to some charts. We're going to go through the e-mini daily chart all the way down to the 15 minute and the 13,500 tip bar chart. And then I'm going to roll through the uh, swing trading charts, the daily charts for the futures markets and just see where we are at at the beginning of the year. Seasonal pattern always tends to be bullish into holidays. It's bullish uh, into the end of the year. We've got window dressing going on by the fund managers, keeping everything good for their numbers at the end of the year. And then at the beginning of the year, we also have people readjusting their portfolios and profits being taken and so on. And that's what's accounted for this movement up 
uh, into the end of the year and then some profit taking going on. You can see we had an exhaustion buy pattern at the high with a Rambo pattern. That was one of the days between Christmas and New Year's right at the very high. Amateur activity in that period, there's no professionals really trading between Christmas and New Year. They're taking that time off and that's amateurs unfortunately getting wrong footed right at those highs. Exhaustion buy and Rambo pattern tends to be an unstable pattern uh, and we've also broken the low of that little amateur sequence that, which is only really one bar. We've come off pretty hard in the last uh, week's trading or so. However, we are in a confirmed uptrend uh, on the daily chart and if we go down to uh, the 135 minute chart and the 45 minute chart as well, I think we are in a confirmed uptrend. No, 45 minute we've just flipped into a confirmed downtrend there. but. In terms of longer term charts, we're definitely in a confirmed uptrend. And you can see we're uh, above resistance on the lowest time frame and the intermediate time frame. We've got to go see a pullback to end of trend at least on the lowest time frame. So all this activity at the moment, these amateur down bars at some point will catch when these two lines come together. You can see on better sine wave on the daily chart, these two lines will come together and cross and that'll be the cyclical timing when the market uh, will be due for a support to come in and bounce from there. So who knows how quickly those lines are going to come together. It's going to be interesting trading this week, but look for that in the next uh, week or so uh, for an area that will find support on the daily chart here. And it's amateur down bars. Yes, we had an exhaustion buy pattern, but it didn't come with blue professional up bars. Uh, into these highs. So it's not professional profit taking up there. It's just amateurs getting wrong footed and we're going to come back down, find support and bounce up from there. So interesting times on the daily chart. Going down to the 135 minute chart. Here you can see again confirmed uptrend uh, with the background printed in red, which means in terms of price and volume, we're in an uptrend. Here you can see the Rambo patterns. The last Rambo patterns that we had this little sequence here, I always talk about look for the break of the amateur bars in the sequence. And that was this bar here. The low of that sequence never got broken and so we kept on moving up. Yes, the move was being led by the amateur. Uh, and so it was suspect, but it didn't turn into a change in trend. This one's different. We had all those amateur patterns there and you can see that little amateur sequence got broken there into a little bit of a downtrend. So time to take profits up here, but still confirmed uptrend. We've put in this little support, the pullback in an uptrend support uh, on this lowest time frame. That hasn't held, so we're going to need to come down to support on the intermediate time frame, which will be that support on the daily chart that we talked about from which we'll have another bounce. No blue professional bars. The readings down here, pretty decent in terms of a sell-off so far, but haven't generated an exhaustion sell pattern down here or blue professional bars at that point. So we're not going to have a bounce quite yet. 45 minute chart. Here you can see the topping out going on here. There was a Rambo pattern right at those highs. Bang. The amateur bars of that sequence got broken within a couple of days. And here on the 45 minute chart, we've actually turned into confirmed downtrend. So we're below uh, supports on the uh, lowest and the intermediate time frames here. We've got to see some exhaustion sell pattern. We've got to see blue professional bars catch at some point, but we're in a downtrend at the moment on the 45 minute chart here. Same thing on the 15, confirmed downtrend here. Here we've got an exhaustion sell pattern at the lows, but the last time we saw blue professional bars was on the retrace. So we had a retrace, the professional stepped in and sell it down, and we continue to sell off here. Uh, and this move was actually quite strong. That was professionals selling down that move rather than exhaustion sell happening as the professionals were selling it down. The yellow bars show us the beginning and the ends of the week. So this is the two or three weeks over Christmas and New Year's where we kept on making higher highs. And then we have blue professional bars stepping at the lows here, catch the market, push it up to those highs. And on this chart here on better sine wave, we're below these supports on all three time frames here. So we've broken those quite decisively. So we're still in the downtrend, still got to go see blue professional bars at the lows coming in to mark a proper low in this market from which we can bounce. 13,500 tip bar chart. What we have not seen yet is exhaustion sell on blue professional bars coming at the lows. That exhaustion sell was getting the move going. You can see the professionals just up here taking profits uh, at the beginning of the week and then we sell off pretty hard. On these retraces, you've got amateur up bars into these retraces. The first one here, blue professional bar, classic stair step trade, we break down, no blue professional bars at the lows. On the retrace, the professionals come in, sell it down, bang. That's a nice trade to the downside. But we've got no blue professional bars at the lows down here. We have no exhaustion sell pattern at the moment. So we're still in a downtrend on the 13,500 tip bar chart. So there we go. That's the mini top to bottom daily chart all the way down to the tip bar charts. So for the time being, we're still in a downtrend. We've got to find some area of support where the professionals step in 
but just remember on the higher time frame charts we're still in an uptrend uh, so it's just a retrace move uh, at some point that'll be held by the professionals so there we go e mini done let us talk about the swing trading charts for each of the 15 futures markets that we follow here and we've got the highest time frame charts i call these the daily charts but they're three bars in a day session so with each of these charts, what I'm doing is focusing on the color of the bars that gives me the uh, trend direction in better sine wave and also the trailing stop that comes from better pro -am. So this is the euro chart. You can see the uh, bars are in red, so we're in an uptrend. We're also above the trailing stop on uh, better pro -am. So that means we're a confirmed uptrend uh, on the euro. And the last time we saw blue professional bars, they were buying into that dip here at uh, eight and a half. And so we bounced from there, exhaustion buy, maybe getting this move going and bearish divergence. We just had a little bit of weakness, but we got no blue professional bars at the highs. So long term, we're still in an uptrend uh, on the euro. British pound, same thing. Bars are in red, trailing stop. Uh, is in red and we're above the trailing stop. Here's all the blue professional bars came in in October, November, down at these lows, and we rallied from there. So British pound still in an uptrend. Aussie dollar, same thing. Bars are uh, red and we're above the trailing stop. You can see here the low was made October, November with the blue professional bars, exhaustion, sold bullish divergence coming at those lows, bang. So we're still in an uptrend on the Aussie dollar. And lastly, Japanese yen. Japanese yen, I like this for this year. I think the Japanese yen might be an interesting story. Bars are red, although it's uh, pretty volatile over the last few days and the trailing stop is in red. So we're in an uptrend on the Japanese yen and we've had these blue professional bars coming at the lows. Uh, a lot of this uh, volatile activity here. So for me, is this area going to hold and break out of 71, 72 uh, is going to be absolutely key. So I think the Japanese yen is, is an interesting trade for this year. E-mini we talked about. This is the 135 minute chart here. Blue professional bars. Last time we saw them were back in October. That was the low. We have rallied. We're above the trailing stop. The bars are in red. So that's an uptrend as well. And lastly, 10-year notes, same thing, uptrend, bars are in red, we're above the trailing stop, and the last time was back in October, November, that we saw blue professional bars here. The exhaustion sell, bullish divergence, and finally we break up through that area into an uptrend, so we're an uptrend on 10-year notes as well. So all of those are looking good. Gold and silver, not so convinced here. Uh, gold, we are uh, below the trailing stop here, but the bars are in red, so we haven't made a decision yet. But last time we had signs of weakness signals here, so gold's been going nowhere after our little push up into 2150s, um, but that's looking weak at the moment. So let's see what happens with gold, but potentially we've got a little bit of a downtrend to break into there. Silver, same thing. This one's actually confirmed downtrend. So we've got the bars in white, which means better sine wave. The uh, price trend mechanism is in a downtrend, and we're below uh, the trailing stop on better prime. So in terms of volume and professional activity, we're in a downtrend. So silver and gold, not looking good. They had a nice breakaway up to $26, but wasn't able to continue that. We've had weakness. We're sitting on a bit of a ledge here at 23. So let's see what happens to gold and silver in the next few weeks. And lastly, Bitcoin. Bitcoin has been on a bit of a tear. So we're in an uptrend because we're above the trailing stop. But the bars have actually turned white lately and some blue professional bars have come in with this activity. So let's see if we continue to break up through 46 with these blue professional bars and potentially buying that dip. We need to get through 46 for a confirmed uptrend here. Or if we break through 41s, that means we're going to some weakness and a downtrend on Bitcoin. So next we'll talk about crude. Crude, we're in a downtrend here. So you can see here we're below the trailing stop. The bars are in white. Last time we saw blue professional bars here was on that retrace selling off. Yes, we have had exhaustion sell here, but no blue professional bars at the lows. So we're still in the downtrend on crude and natural gas. Natural gas has flipped around. So the bars are in blue at the moment. They are a professional activity here at 280, but we're above the trailing stop. So last year we tried to hold at $3, didn't hold. We actually had a bit of a stair-step trade here on the retrace. The blue professional bars come in, they sell it down. We came all the way down almost to $2 down here. But at this point, blue professional bars step in. And we've also got quite a lot of activity here at 280 on those blue professional bars. So we've got broken above the trailing stop and I guess the better sine wave is actually showing that's in an uptrend. So uh, crude not looking good, but natural gas might be uh, a winner this year. So let's see what happens to natural gas. Lastly, copper. Copper, 
We're not sure at the moment. We're above the trailing stop, but the bars are white, so it's not confirmed uptrend. Last time we saw blue professional bars wasn't at the lows here. We sold it down. We tested back into that area and it's failed. So if we go through 370 here, that means we're still in the downtrend on copper. And we've got our exhaustion by bearish divergence, and this could easily roll over on copper. And that could mean weakness of the global economy. Um, that's why crude and copper are kind of heading down. Natural gas might, might be a seasonal trade play, and it's also been uh, super oversold over the last couple of years. And lastly, the AGs. So the AGs, so this is corn, a yes in a downtrend. The bars are white, we're below the trailing stop, but blue professional bars and exhaustion sell coming in here. So that's interesting, but it's not turned around yet on corn. On soybeans, again, downtrend because we're bars are in white, we're below the trailing stop. So that's in a downtrend, confirmed downtrend on soybeans. And lastly, wheat. Wheat downtrend at the moment, but these blue professional bars are interesting. So does that mean on that retrace here that that was professionals selling it down and we'll keep going through these lows? And that's a potential. But if we break up through 650 uh, with wheat at that point, then that could take off to the upside. So that's what I'm looking at on wheat. Wheat and corn, interesting to me. Natural gas is interesting. On the Forex charts and the E-mini charts, we're just waiting for those blue professional bars as we're dipping down where those professionals step in, hold the market and push it back up into our confirmed uptrend. So there we go. Quite a lot of information in that video. I hope it doesn't run too long. Hope your trading is going well and I'm looking forward to this week's trade.